بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم 5090 نومبر 24 کوشچن پیپر 12 اینڈ وی ویل ڈسکس کوشچن 12 می بی 20 25 کوشچنز بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کوشچن نمبر 1 دی ڈایاگرام شوز 3 ڈفرنٹ ٹائپس اف مائکروسکوپک سٹرکچرز 1 2 3 ایز یو نو 3 ایز روٹ ہیئر سیل 2 ایز ریڈ بلڈ سیل اینڈ 1 ایز زائلم so the answer to one is d then coming to part two uh, question two species of organism have scientific name made up of two parts what is the system used to name species the binomial system now there is something you know that's the binomial system is actually part of the syllabus and that system is called the binomial system which system so in a way that was a clue as well of course it could have been classification system but there's no such system or the genus system is also wrong and the dichotomous key is in some other situation it is used. Question number three, the diagram shows the water potential measured in units of KPA, kilopascals in a group of plant cells, a large negative number. So large negative number like means minus 325, minus 300, minus 450. A large negative number indicates a lower water potential. So if we say it is moving from, it will be moving from a, a less negative to a more negative because larger negative. So if I compare 300 and 290, so it would be moving from the larger negative number has a lower water potential. So 300 has a lower water potential and 290 has a higher water potential because there is less of the solute, so more free water molecules. Less of the solute, more free water molecules. So now it says which sequence of arrows shows the net movement of water from cell X? Is it A, B, C or D? So then we've got to look at it. So for 300, it goes to, now I'm going to show you how it's going to be working. From 300, it goes to 325. Then it goes to 450. So it has to go from a less negative to a more negative. And then 450, it goes to 600. That's why the answer is B. The other one wrong. They're going from, uh, they're going like a 300 is going to 325, but here it's going 300 to 290. So it has to go from a less negative to a more negative because the larger negative number has a lower water potential. So a smaller negative number will have a higher water potential. So from 300, it should go to 325, not from 300 to 290. So that's why you've got to figure this out like this. Then coming to question number four, which statements about active transport are correct? Ions move from a region of high to low, move across the cell membrane. Energy released during respiration is used to move ions into or out of a cell. So the answer is two and three. This is wrong. Active transport is low to high. So one cannot be in this. So if one is in there, you just cancel it out. So this is the only one left. Which biological molecules contains the chemical elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus? So that was easy because phosphorus is only present in one, uh, one uh, biological molecule, and that's DNA. The nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, a base, and a deoxyribose sugar. So question number five, A, cellulose is just carbohydrates as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Lipid also has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Starch is also a carbohydrate, it only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But it said carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So in DNA, there's a nitrogenous base, and there is a phosphate, a phosphate group as well. Question number six, catalase is an enzyme found in potato tissue. It catalyzes the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. The apparatus shown was used to investigate the activity of catalase. So we have 3% hydrogen peroxide and we have potato discs. Because it says catalase is present in potato tissue. In fact, it's, kind of, it's present in all plant tissues. So um, there's 3% hydrogen peroxide, there's a potato disc, there's a measuring cylinder, and then the oxygen is collecting, and then we can measure the volume of oxygen collected and this is a water displacement method. Five identical potato discs were dropped into 15 cm cube of 3% hydrogen peroxide solution at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. 
the time taken for 5 cm of oxygen to be produced was recorded did it take 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds the procedure was repeated at each of the following temperatures 30 40 50 60 and 70 the which graph shows the results of this investigation so what do we have on the y axis we have time and then we have temperature on the x axis so look at the four graphs look at the four graphs and then you can figure this out which one is correct basically how are you going to do this question whenever there is a temperature graph you've got to realize there has been an optimum temperature so at any optimum temperature the time taken should have been to collect five centimeter of uh, here it says the time taken for 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 five centimeter of oxygen to be produced was recorded so what did it take what 10 seconds 20 seconds so at then optimum the temperature the time taken should have been the least so this would be the optimum and before that of course the time should have taken more and then as we go above the temperature above the optimum then again time taken should be more so that's why the answer is a this was of course wrong because it's a linear that's not the case and it's an enzyme control reaction so the normal graph is going to be like that and uh, it would then of course why is this wrong because time was less and then the time is increasing at the optimum temperature the time should be the shortest it should take less time to collect five centimeter of oxygen question number seven the graph shows uh, factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis so we've got uh, rate of photosynthesis and light intensity rate of photosynthesis and co2 concentration and rate of photosynthesis and temperature now it says at which points on the graphs could the rate of photosynthesis be limited by the CO2 concentration or the carbon dioxide concentration? Now how would I have figured it out? I've told you ever whatever is on the x-axis and if there is the graph is increasing, so three carbon dioxide concentration is limiting. Why? Because if you increase the carbon dioxide, the rate is this. Now if you increase the carbon dioxide, the rate is increasing. So definitely three is there. Definitely three was there, and of course also. Here, carbon dioxide concentration is limiting because now light is no longer limiting, but carbon dioxide is, uh, is limiting. So, 2 and 3 have to be there. So, if you look at where there is 2 and 3, and then of course 5, of course, here also as temperature is the optimum. So, if you increase the CO2 concentration at that temperature, increasing the CO2 would increase the rate of photosynthesis. So, that's why the answer is C, which is uh, the factors at which the CO2 would be the limiting factor. Then coming on to question number eight, the diagram shows a section through a leaf. What is the main function of the region labeled X? Conduction and sport, gaseous exchange, photosynthesis, prevention of water loss. The answer, of course, is B because it's these air spaces which, inf which ensure that there is gaseous exchange taking place. So, it wasn't conduction and support. Conduction and support is more in the xylem. Photosynthesis would be where there are chloroplasts and prevention of water loss would be a thicker cuticle and lesser number of stomata or many other reasons for it as well. Question number nine, simple question. Root hair cells take in water and ions from the soil. Which row shows how water and ions are taken? Water is taken by osmosis, so it has to be these two. And ions are taken by active transport. So 9, the answer is D. Then coming to question number 10. Four leafy shoots were cut from the same plant were put into beakers of colored water and left in rooms with different temperatures. In two rooms, electric fans were set up to blow air over the stems. The time taken for the colored water to reach the leaves was measured for each stem. In which stem will the colored water reach the leaves the fastest? Now, which one would be the fastest? You realize that, you know, transpiration is evaporation and diffusion. So increasing the temperature would definitely increase the rate of evaporation and diffusion. So it has to be 30 degrees. And with a fan, of course, because it's going to remove the water which has moved out of the leaf. So it will cre create a gradient between the air spaces. That will be the humidity inside is 10 and outside is 0. So, of course, naturally diffusion gradient is established. So that is why the answer to 10 would be D. Question number 11, cubes of uh, boiled egg whites. So we took cubes of egg whites. 
cubes of egg white are placed in test tubes containing 5 cm of water. Boiled egg white contains protein. Other substances are added to each test tube as shown in the table. The test tubes are left for 8 hours and then tested for amino acids because the protein would be digested to amino acids. Boiled egg white contains other substances are added. In one, you added pepsin and there was result of the test for amino acids. There were no amino acids. Then you added pepsin and an alkali, no amino acids. Then you added nothing, no amino acids. Then you added pepsin and an acid and large amounts of amino acids were seen. Now here, you have to remember this. It has to be four because this is proving that, you know, enzyme, enzyme requires a specific pH and that is going to work. Then when you use boiled pepsin and they were just traces. So that's why it's four and five. If you just added acid, there would be no, there would be some amino acids. If you added alkali, no amino acids. So that is why the fact that pepsin and acid, because what are enzymes? Enzymes work at a specific pH. So the answer to 11 is C, because these were the two things which proved that pepsin is an enzyme, because if the pep, if it still worked, when you boiled it, it still worked, then of course it wasn't an enzyme, because boiling an enzyme denatures it and the shape of the active site is lost and substrate no longer fits. Question number 12, the diagram shows a section through a villus. What is the main role of vessel X? Vessel X is a, is a lacteal and it's going to carry fats or you can say fatty acids and glycerol and the lacteals L, lacteals L lymph. So transfer fatty acids and glycerol to the lymph system. Then coming to question number 13. Which part of the human digestive system is a major region for assimilation of amino acids? Assimilation means the use. The use of amino acids is going to be in the liver. So the liver is going to first decide, okay, which amino acids are going to enter the bloodstream and then they're going to be used by the body cells to make new proteins. And then the excess amino acids are going to be deaminated. So that is why the answer to 13 is A. Deamination of the amino acids take place in the liver. Assimilation, not absorption. If it was absorption, then it would have been in the small intestine. But they didn't ask you absorption. They asked you assimilation of amino acids. Question 14. When the volume of the thorax increases, the pressure in the thorax is lowered. The results in air being taken into the body. How is the volume of the thorax increased so that air is breathed in? By the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles. So the answer is A. By the diaphragm relaxing. No, the diaphragm is, is dome shaped. So it becomes less dome shaped. It says how is the volume of the thorax increased. So the diaphragm contracts. The muscles at the edge of the diaphragm contracts. And the external intercostal muscles contract. And raise the ribcage upwards and outwards. So the volume is increased. And the diaphragm, which is dome-shaped, becomes less dome-shaped. So it becomes flatter. So it becomes flat. So the volume increases from top to bottom. And when the ribs, then of course the intercostal muscle, they, they, they also increases side to side. So 14, the answer is A. Question number 15. The diagram shows how some apparatus is set up to investigate respiration in germinating seeds. We have a thermometer, water bath, a capillary tube, a colored oil drop, germinating seeds, wire mesh, and sodium hydroxide to absorb carbon dioxide. What are we? What are we investigation? Respiration in germinating seeds. So respiration takes up oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is being absorbed. So the carbon dioxide which is being produced is being absorbed by this chemical. And oxygen which is present in the air here. There is air here, right from here to here to here to here. There's all air. And the oxygen is being used up from the air. The colored oil group moves along the capillary tube. What causes the movement of the colored oil drop? Basically it is the oxygen that is being used. So the oxygen that is being used is uh, is going to be the reason why this colored oil drop 
is moving this side. Why? Because you see the carbon dioxide produced is being absorbed by the chemical. This is to absorb the carbon dioxide. So the oxygen in the air is going to be used up and that's going to create a low pressure. And so higher pressure from this side and then this is going to be pushed towards this side. Question number 16. A ventricular septal defect is a hole in the septum between the left and the right ventricle. So we've got to get a hole somewhere here. Right? Of the heart. Which statement describes the effect on blood flow through the heart in a person with a ventricular septal defect? Some deoxygenated blood flows into the pulmonary vein. Now you've got to be remembering we have the what what is arising from the right ventricle is the pulmonary artery, which is then going to go to the lungs. And what is returning to it is the pulmonary vein. But then what is arising from here from the left ventricle is the aorta. So some deoxygenated blood flows into the pulmonary vein. How could that be? Some oxygenated blood flows into the right atrium. No, oxygenated blood is here. How would it go into the right atrium? Some oxygenated blood flows through the pulmonary artery. Yeah, because what is going to happen is going to go here and then it's going to go into the pulmonary artery. So the answer is C. Why? Because you see the left ventricle contains oxygenated blood. Left ventricle contains oxygenated blood. Now that is going into the right ventricle and what arises from the right ventricle is the pulmonary artery which is going to carry the deoxygenated blood. So some oxygenated blood is going to flow into the right ventricle and then from the right ventricle is going to go into the pulmonary artery. Some deoxygenated blood flows into the left atrium. Why? There's no, there's no, this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium. So why would deoxygenated flow into the left atrium? There is no hole there in the atria. So please try to understand this question. Question number 17. Human blood is composed of plasma, red blood cells and blood cells, uh, white blood cells and platelets. Which road states the function of each of these components? So basically, red blood cells is transporting oxygen. So you only have these two choices. And white blood cells is producing antibodies. So here this is. So you can easily narrow it down. And plasma, of course, transports carbon dioxide in solution. So you can also know that. That's also a syllabus point, actually. So 17, the answer is B. How is malaria transported from one person to another? The answer is, of course, C, infected mosquitoes. Malaria transmitted from one person to another. So it has to be infected mosquitoes. Number 19, carbon dioxide is a poisonous gas that combines with hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin. Which function of the blood will be affected if a person inhales carbon monoxide? Yeah, of course, it's going to be carboxyhemoglobin is a stable compound. And it binds with hemoglobin and it cannot sort of unbind. So it is going to affect the carriage of oxygen to the body cells. Because if this red blood cell has carboxyhemoglobin in it, inside it has got carboxyhemoglobin, then this will not carry oxygen. The hemoglobin is now with the carbon monoxide. It has formed carboxyhemoglobin, which is a stable compound. Oxyhemoglobin is an unstable compound. Forms oxyhemoglobin in the lungs and then gives up the oxygen in the body tissues. Question number 20. Which disease can be cured with antibiotics? Now we know lung cancer is not a bacterial disease. HIV is a viral disease. So it only has to be cholera can only be treated with antibiotics. So the answer is D.